Hi, I'm Emma Stelmer Radley and I'm going to do a bit of a reading from my upcoming book Whispering Wildwood. Right, so uh, Whispering Wildwood, we find our two heroines hiding from a thunderstorm in a cave. Um, Corinne, our point of view character, is madly in love with the worldly and gorgeous rogue and pirate Victoria. They've argued and butted heads for large parts of the story, but they've now gotten close. So we find them sitting next to each other, and um, chatting and holding hands. Corinne groaned. Ugh, don't remind me that I bought his ridiculous flattery. Ugh, all that nonsense about my laugh and about my eyes when they caught the sun. Well, he was right. Those are both beautiful features of yours. I prefer the way you laugh in your sleep, though. You giggle much louder than your waking laugh. I do? Their fingers moved against each other in soft, comfortable caresses. Mm-hmm. Corinne surveyed Victoria by the illumination of the next lightning strike. She was distracting her from worrying about her brother again. How did she do that? How was it working? Well, however it worked, she definitely needed more of it. Why are you looking at me like that? Victoria asked. Make conversation, Corinne told herself. If she can do it, so can you. I, um, I am, um, I was wondering if you were ready to answer that question. I mean, it's just you and me here and we know each other better now. A crease formed on Victoria's brow. What question? The one about what your favourite sound is. I promise I won't laugh. Victoria sighed, looking self-conscious. It's very specific. Well, good. General favourite sounds are of no use to me. Victoria shook her head with a little laugh. The lowered light made it hard to see her expressions, so Corinne moved closer. That was obviously the only reason for her to move closer. It certainly wasn't due to the cold. The summer heat, in combination with the dense thunderstorm air, made the cave hot and muggy. Victoria's breaths, sweet-smelling as her lip tint, were warm against Corinne's face but the gust of them was welcome. Corinne didn't know if it was the humid air that made her sweat or the fact that her body was betraying her, wanting what it shouldn't be focusing on right now. All right, my favorite sound is, Victoria closed her eyes and spoke fast. The gasp a woman makes when she really wants you to kiss her but isn't expecting to get her wish and then she does. She frowned. Eyes still closed. I don't hear that sound a lot. I mostly attract men and usually ones who expect to be kissed and therefore show no wonder at it. She tilted her head back with an expression like she was daydreaming. But the sound of a woman's soft voice in a pleased, heartfelt little gasp against my lips, right before she grants me the indulgent splendor of a kiss, Victoria blew out a sigh. I've only experienced it a few times, but on each occasion, it was the most beautiful sound I could imagine. It set my heart hammering like nothing else, ready to revere the woman in question. Corinne cleared her throat. Victoria's eyes flew open, just as lightning illuminated her face. You promised you wouldn't laugh. I'm not laughing. I'm merely smiling at how sweet you can be. Oh. Not as sweet as you, Miss Sweetblood. Corinne rolled her eyes. Oh, don't start with this again. What is it with you and nicknames? Victoria laughed. And then she did that thing again. The teeth raking over her lower lip thing she did on the V in Clever, when Corinne was binding her thigh wound before. This time it was in the middle of a smile. The lip was left reddened where the teeth had scraped, making Corinne unable to look at anything but those raspberry red lips. Victoria pulled her onto her lap, the movement making the leather of her coat creak familiarly, a tonic against the startling thunder. She grabbed Corinne's thighs to place them on either side of her own body until they were wrapped around her. Then she brought her arms around Corinne, enveloping her in the safe embrace of ironhide leather and the woman who had risked her life for her.
This embrace was different than before, though. It wasn't holding Corinne back from something dangerous, or comforting her, or even distracting her. This felt like an embrace that Victoria needed. They were so close now, so intimately close. There was no disguising this as friendship, or any other sort of familiarity. Their gazes locked, intense and bared. Thunder crashed again, like a giant whip being lashed. It made Victoria jolt, so Corinne held her tighter. Corinne couldn't remember anyone ever looking at her with desire. Not like this. Not the way Victoria watched her now, like she was deficient in something that only Corinne could provide. Victoria moved her face closer, slowly, so that Corinne could draw back if she wished. A fearful voice in Corinne's mind wanted her to do just that, wanted her to get up and run from how much this moment meant, wanted her to focus on getting Matt back, focus on her brother, wanted to not be this vulnerable, to not feel the weight of this moment. But her need for it was greater. So, she tipped her head back to a kissing position, before realising that she didn't have to. Despite Victoria being so much taller, sitting in Victoria's lap made them equal height. Victoria's lips neared hers with a painful slowness. Heated breaths meeting in a small space between mouths. Outside lightning struck, its thunder soon following. Were they as near to kissing as Corinne and Victoria was? Corinne was burning hot and overcome. She closed her eyes, ready. Their mouths touched. Victoria's lips were soft on hers, warm, confident. They moved against Corinne's, capturing, releasing, caressing, enclosing. Corinne's world opened wide, blooming with colour. She never wanted to stop kissing. Her mouth is soft like velvet, she thought, dizzy. There was the wetness of the tip of her tongue touching Corinne's lips, only touching, not reaching them, a promise of more to come. Victoria's hands grasped her waist, steadying her because she'd started to sway. Corinne heard herself moan against Victoria's lips, leaning her full weight into her slotting their bodies together perfectly. Her hands found their way under the coat and slid up Victoria's bodice-clad back until she felt waves of that loose hair tickling her fingers. Corinne's breath halted because of all the sensations, but also because something pressed against her chest. Her breaths halted again, but now out of comprehension. The weight against her chest was Victoria's breasts. It reminded her that there was a real woman under that armour of suaveness and beauty. Not merely a concept. Not just a rogue, a hero, or even a daydream. A red-blooded, real woman with curves, naked skin, and a heart currently beating fast against her own. That means she can feel my heart as well, Corinne realised. Cursed stars, it means she can feel my breasts as well. Could Victoria feel the effect she was having on them? The kiss kept moving, changing, and Corinne dared to nip at Victoria's lower lip with her teeth. Was that a thing that kissing people did? Was she doing this wrong? Victoria had not only experience with lovers of all kinds, she'd even been good enough at this sort of thing to be a paid expert. Corinne was all of a sudden certain that Victoria must be pitying her for her cluelessness and her lack of kissing prowess. Victoria's hands moved from her waist to a point a little lower, then lower still, then to gently cup her buttocks and pull Corinne closer, her core now flush against Victoria's unexpectedly taut belly. Crewing ships must leave you with a strong middle. Corinne tried not to think about the hard surface pressed against her soft one. She had to focus on tamping down her dizziness, which was as strong as it had been during her blood loss. She would not, could not, faint. She tried to only think about how good the kiss felt, how good those hands felt, and on breathing in Victoria's scent. 
that flowery hair oil, the leaves they had slept on, and a hint of iron and salt from blood and sweat, but so faint it only came in as an earthy overtone. She pushed her thoughts away before her mind began obsessing over what she herself smelled like, as she was probably disappointing Victoria in that sense too. And yet, if she did smell bad, if she was touching Victoria the wrong way, if she was a terrible kisser, then why was Victoria making the kiss more urgent? Why was she moan moaning even more than Corinne was? The increasing intensity of their kiss burned every thought out of Corinne's head until she was ruled only by sensations. She slid her hands up to tangle in those soft waves of hair. The tip of that tongue was at her lips again, a gentle knock. She opened her mouth and let Victoria in. The sensation made her thunderstruck. Victoria's tongue moved against Corinne's while her hands slipped in under Corinne's tunic and caressed their way up her back. No touch had ever felt better and Corinne was whimpering, brushing her core against that muscled belly. She would let Victoria take this as far as she thought best. All Corinne wanted was more. Corinne couldn't imagine ever ending this kiss, but then she did desperately want to kiss that scar through Victoria's eyebrow too, and that beautiful swan neck of hers and those scarred hands and, and, and everything currently covered in red velvet and leather. She wanted to put all of this delicious woman into her mouth and taste her like she was a spiced cherry root. The heat and humidity of the cave grew even heavier. Corinne was as warm as she was wet. Still, there was no way she was stopping for water or fresh air. She was drunk of Victoria and everything else faded away. Lightning struck again, closer this time, so that even through her closed eyes, Corinne could see the flash of light. Thunder was right on its heels, loud enough to make them jolt. Victoria pulled back to murmur, as, as incredible as this is, we should leave it for later, my darling. You want to focus on how we are going to get Matt back, against Corinne's mouth. I thought that was my line, not yours, Corinne whispered, her lips swollen with kisses and her breathing ragged. Hey, I may be a debauched pirate, but obviously I'll always respect a lover's requirements, even if the lover in question is currently overcome with the needs of their body. Oh, yes, of course, Corinne said, her head clearing. They were still close enough that every spoken word was felt against the other's face. Victoria's arms were wrapped tight around Corinne, her hands hot against Corinne's back. Playfully, Corinne bumped Victoria's nose with her own. You're going to have to let me go if we're going to stop this and focus on the rescue. Yes, yes, I, I will, but in a moment, but Corinne, she sighed out the name. Holding you and kissing you feels so good. Her eyes were unfocused with lust, a naughty smile playing on her kiss-wettened lips. That was when it struck her in. If we weren't in such a traumatic situation, she would have bedded me. She would have been my first lover. But to her, would I have been just another conquest? No, she decided, conquest wasn't fair. Victoria thought more highly of her than that she knew. But just how did she think of her? What had she said before? Corinne sifted through her memories and found the quote she was looking for. Victoria had said, that gave me hope that you might want me the way I want you. Want. That was all it was. Victoria wanted her body, wanted to address the sexual tension between them. Her mind and heart, however, could never be enough for someone as worldly and incredible as Victoria. Not to mention that Corinne's grumpiness and inability to open up would drive her away sooner or later. It did that to everyone. Corinne crawled out of Victoria's lap and sat closer to the cave's entrance, pretending to check the thunderstorm's progress so as to not show Victoria her distress. So that was me reading a, a bit of uh, Whispering Wildwood.